Yeah, so my name is Matt Scannell, and I play guitar uh, and sing and write songs for a band called Vertical Horizon. I've been playing PRS since 1997, I think. Long time. Yeah, I was in <laughs> music in New York City, and uh, um, you can bleep that part out. And um, I was trying some, uh, you know, single cut style guitars and, um, or hum, let's say dual humbucker guitars, because I had a bunch of strats, but I didn't have anything with humbuckers. And um, I knew I needed to have that kind of flavor. We had just signed a record deal with RCA Records, so I had a little bit of money to buy a new guitar. And, uh, and so I tried a bunch of guitars, and when I picked up a McCarty, it just was perfect. And I was used to playing guitars in stores that you almost knew from the from the outset that you'd have to have a little work done to them. You know, you'd have to get, get it set up or adjusted or something. That was just part of the gig. Uh, but this guitar felt perfect. Um, and I was really impressed, you know. And so um, since then I've, I've uh, had my fair share of these beautiful instruments. There is one uh, PRS that I'm, I'm ecstatic about and privileged to have. Uh, it's a new guitar that they built for me over the past six months or so. It's a black single cut um, built specifically to my uh, you know specifications and uh, it has the the low turn humbuckers on it. It's got the piezo bridge on it. Um, it's a bit interesting because I wanted to keep the four knob architecture. I wanted to have, I've found over time that having the volume, a volume control for both of the pickups is something that I really like a lot. You know, I would see Snowy White play with David Gilmore, with uh, Roger Waters, and uh, you know, he'd be spending the whole night in between, in the in-between position and then adjusting the volume knobs to suit. Uh, and of course, I heard David Grissom talking about, um, you know, watching the, the Led Zeppelin DVD and noticing that, you know, Jimmy Page spent most of the night in the middle. Um, so most of the guitars I had had up until then were single volume knob guitars. And so this guitar has the, the, the two volume knobs on it and, uh, and the piezo bridge. Man, I mean, if you haven't tried the piezo bridge that PRS puts in these guitars, it's, you have to. It's mind-blowingly cool. And, and for us in my band, we have two guitar players and we both use that piezo system. So effectively, it sounds like there are four guitar players on stage and we use them both at the same time. That's the other thing. Um, I feel like a lot of players, the, 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 uh, their instinct is to be playing either acoustic or electric, um, but I would really encourage people to be using both the outputs at the same time. Plug the piezo output into some sort of a PA, plug the magnetic pickups into your amp, and then for me, one of my go-to things that I use all the time is just a, a little bit of the bridge pickup, you know, on one or two or three or whatever, just really clean, uh, a little bit of a chorus on that sound, and blend it in with the piezo sound, and it's just massive sounding. It's really, really cool. So. It's a very flexible guitar, it's a very stable guitar, and the, the new black one just kills me, it's so good. It's got this beautiful wood binding on the neck that they did for me, so it, I, at first glance it just looks like a black guitar, but the headstock is a, like a, a beautiful sort of Brazilian rosewood, but it's very dark, and then the back is natural, like sort of like this, natural uh, uh, mahogany back and sides. You know, so it, it, at first glance it's very simple, but then you notice there are all these little nuances. It's, it's killer, I love it. As much as possible, lately I've been playing one guitar. I've gone through periods where I've, I've you know, switched for every song, and that's fine, but I've enjoyed, I think, um, getting really comfortable with one instrument and then just sort of spending the night with it. So I used to tour with a rack, and I had a 10-space rack with pedals, uh, a, um, uh, you know, whatever, what is it called? The, um, the ground control, you know, GCX, GCX yep. thing, thank you. And uh, that was activated by a Rocktron all access pedal on the front. Um, and I had, you know, killer pedals like a, a, a Univibe from Prescription Electronics, a uh, Tube Screamer, um, a full tone, full drive, one of the original ones that was just like in the steel case, um, and a Rocktron Repliflex. And so it was kind of, a lot, you know, and now um, I have two pedal boards. One is a bit, a bit more. That's a bit more indulgent. But when we're doing fly dates, I have the new Helix HX, 
uh, and I have an Analog Man, uh, Analog Man King of Tone pedal, um, uh, and then this custom um, router pedal and DI slash isolation transformer that's built by XTS, uh, um, Exact Tone Solutions in um, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, and so it's super compact. It's on a, a pedal board Metro, I want to say maybe a 16, is that one of the ones? So it's really small and it fits in the bottom of my rolling duffel bag. Uh, because of course, flying, we want to try to save money as much as possible. I mean, it's a real consideration. Carrying around a big, huge pedal board is expensive. You know, you're paying for it every single time you fly. So this thing is really compact. I have the, the, the amazing thing about that Helix HX is I, I have the analog man, the king of tone in uh, one of the loops. But the cool thing about the HX is you can run, uh, you know, a pedal that you know that's tried and true if you want to uh, in one of the loops. And then you can, with the four cable method, have fuzzes or an oct you know, octafuzz kind of sound uh, in front of it or a univibe in front of it, uh, in front of the amplifier. And then all the time-based effects can go in the back end. And that's what I'm doing. And it's kind of amazing how much you can get out of this super small and compact pedal board. I love it. I have a Helix pedal board that I've used uh, for some fly dates over to Asia uh, where backline was a little bit um, sort of dicey. And so, uh, and I don't, I don't, um, I love the Helix. I think that once, for me, the, the game changer was once I loaded some impulse responses into it, um, then I felt like it really came to life. It's an incredible thing. And as they continue to improve that thing, uh, it really, it could, uh, it could replace a lot of amps. I, you know, my favorite amp of all time is a 68 small box Plexi that I bought a long, long time ago. So I am really, on some levels, a purist. Um, so if they, you know, when, the fact that I can even use this stuff at all is a testament to how great it is. Um, but I'm not quite there yet. I, I still do love the interaction and I do love the nuances and the chaos of tubes. I still backline a Marshall DSL 50. It's just everywhere and it's easy. Um, ironically enough, I don't tend to record with one very much, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's something that I know and that we can find easily. Um, 412 always. I like a straight 412. I like uh, greenback 25 watt speakers, um, and uh, and yeah, the straight for me the straight cabinets are, are better than the angled cabinets. Uh, Vertical Horizon just came out with a new record called The Lost Mile, um, which I'm really excited about, really proud of. It's a little different for us. Um, a lot of our records have been, you know, rock records. Um, this one. I, I had been listening to a lot of my old Depeche Mode records and New Order records and The Cure um, and was just so inspired by that music and I had never really sort of honored that influence in our music before and so I sort of dove deep and I, I kind of made a, a record that is in the vein of those bands and there are a lot of guitar moments on it but I wouldn't say that it's as guitar centric as some of the other records we've made. Um, and it's just, you know what, to be honest with you, we started doing this a long time ago and to still feel inspired and feel like there are songs in me and there are, there's music that we want to make, uh, I think you have to honor that and, and you, so you need to follow it wherever it takes you, you know what I mean? The next record could be a, a big guitar rock record as well. Um, but I think, it, you know, as someone who, who loves all kinds of music, it's nice to broaden the scope of what my band could be known for. You know, you've got two heavies here this weekend, you know, Tim Pierce and David Grissom. I mean, we, I was just hanging with them backstage, and the talent level between those two guys is just off the charts, you know? And the, the other thing I think that's so amazing about that is a lot of these guys who are the, the uber talents, the, the supreme sort of, um, you know, badass players, they're the most humble and sweet, down-to-earth guys. And I... That's a great life lesson, you know what I mean? Like, uh, learn from those dudes who, who maybe arguably could be a little bit like, yeah, you know, kind of a big deal, and they're not. Like, okay, if they're not, then I definitely, I'm not. And I, you know, I want to keep all that stuff in check, you know? 
Um, I love I love their playing. I absolutely adore both those guys. So I'm just inspired by by hanging out with them today. Uh, Peter Gabriel is one of my favorite musicians of all time, and if I could ever sit down in a room with him and and write something or just hear his voice like in a room singing, I think my brain would explode. But it'd be awesome. <laughs> when I, I used to live in Washington D.C., and I would get your catalogs in the mail, and so. So AMS for me, like I have a real sweet spot in my heart for your company and I, I live in California now and so my, you know, my world is sort of West Coast, a little bit more West Coast centric. But I, when I heard that I was going to be able to talk to you today, I was super psyched because I learned so much about guitar from reading your catalogs. I bought an, uh, I don't know, maybe we don't mention it when we, I bought another brand guitar from you guys back in like 1989 or 90 or something like a long, long time ago. Um, but anyways, I'm just glad to see you guys are still around. And uh, so it's, it's, it's nice to, to see you. And say awesome. Hello.